up until now or how it is taught in, in general school curriculum is that the earth core uh, is, is, is solid basically and um, I spoke to, I don't know if you've heard about uh, uh, Professor Konstantin Meyer from Germany He's, um, he founded the theory of or works on the theory of uh, expanding earth and part of his theory uh, to explain a lot of phenomena that uh, are going on on the earth especially in connection with uh, neutrino uh, measurements is that these uh, phenomena are only possible if the earth core is not solid but rather uh, a plasma and and some of the parts of it also lead towards being hollow um, so what what is your standpoint are there any people from the scientific community who kind of disagree with you or say hey um why are you even doing this um only uh only about all of them <laughs> mostly they don't want to be embarrassed because of the textbooks that have already been written but uh, stanford university has an interesting uh, theory and uh, they have some facts to go with it and that is that the core of the Earth is, in fact, solid. They believe it's a solid iron with a, a very little bit of nickel uh, mixed with it. The Japanese have measured the resonant frequency of this core, and they believe that it is a very dense iron crystal. Uh, those in, uh, at Stanford believe that it is just about at the temperature of the sun, and the ones in, um, in Japan believe that it is somewhat cooler than that, uh, you know, probably somewhere around 50,000 degrees. The uh, Stanford School believes that it is lopsided, and that's why um, they get some very long wave vibrations that come through the mantle that are somewhat dampened because there's a liquid component to the core, they believe. Um, I also think that the expanding Earth theory has a lot of credence. Not so much for what we see inside the Earth, but for what we see on the outside of the Earth. The way the continents lay out, the difference between the seafloor ages and dry land ages, they're not even close. They're, they're, they're hundreds of millions of years apart. And um, it's interesting that if the planet has expanded in the way that, uh, that um, you know, Neil Adams and, and others... Uh, believe, then there should be a gap between this core, which I believe probably is solid, and a crust, which is probably solid but with a liquid mantle uh, it, sandwiched in between, which we see evidenced by all kinds of volcanic activity. So we have a crust somewhere around 900 miles thick. We have a core uh, somewhere around 2,500, 2,600 miles thick, and that leaves a gap between the core and the outer and the inner crust of several hundred miles, which is plenty of room for uh, you know life as we know it to exist. It also explains the magnetosphere. It explains the instability of the uh, north magnetic pole. It explains the difference between what we call the Lagrange points, which is a, a point of equidistance between the sun and the Earth. It should be measured to the center of the earth but it is not it falls about 1200 kilometers short which means that the center of gravity for earth is not in the center of the planet it's somewhat offset from the center of the planet which means that there's a gap between the crust and the core and this center of the earth is kind of splitting the difference between those two gravitational bodies it also explains why the earth is in the orbit that it is in instead of an orbit much further out or much closer to the sun. Based on the diameter of the Earth and the diameter of our orbit, something's wrong. Because we know what the density of the Earth is, or we suppose what it is, but the Earth's in the wrong place for that kind of orbit. It needs to be heavier, and it's not. So uh, that also indicates that there's a gap between the crust and the core.